the whole industry in many ways is built off of people who found their own path and built their own path. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, this is Chris Chen here with another episode of Theme Park Arts Podcast. Uh, we have two special guests today from Cornell University, Sam Kuhn and Ariel, Ariel Goldberg from the Cornell Theme Park Entertainment Group. Welcome. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you guys want to introduce yourself real quick? Um, like, wh what are you guys studying? What's your role in the club? Stuff like that. Sure. Um, my name is Arielle. I'm currently a senior studying computer science, um, and I'm the president of Cornell TPEG. I'm Sam. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a third year grad student uh, studying uh, urban planning and landscape architecture. Uh, I was an undergrad at Cornell as well, so I've, I've been able to be with the club for a little bit of time. Um, and yeah, I'm the, I'm the grad advisor now. Okay, cool. Um, well, I really wanted to do an interview with you guys because I saw that you guys were hosting a design competition. Um, I thought that was really cool that you're hosting it out of Cornell. I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your club, like how, how long has Cornell TPEG been around? Sure, Sam, do you wanna talk about that? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, the, the club was formed in fall semester of 2014. Um, okay. We actually held our first uh, theme park competition the same, the same uh, academic year, that spring of 2015. Uh -huh. So uh, we've been able to, to kind of evolve the competition as the club has evolved. Um, I, I joined the club in that spring 2015, so I wasn't part of the, the group that founded it. Um, I was just lucky enough to kind of land at Cornell and to realize it was a thing and come along. Um, but yeah, the, the, the club's changed quite a lot. It's seen quite a lot of new faces. Uh, the competition has changed quite a lot, and it's something we really enjoy is getting to kind of build and see where it goes with you know each new group of kids that come through. Okay, cool. Now, is there any theme entertainment program there or is it just something you guys do for fun? There's no like um, program for theme entertainment, right? Yeah, there, there aren't any majors or anything related to that. It's mostly just people's passion on the side. That's really cool. Um, could you tell me a little bit about this competition? Like, how did you guys, you know, get it going? Like, it seems like you guys have really great sponsors and judges. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about this competition? Sure. So um, it's definitely grown over the years. Um, this year, we're giving away $8,500, which is definitely our biggest competition wow. so far. Um, we have five sponsors this year. Um, we have Whitewater West, Kavu. JRA, Zamperla, and Team Park Project. Um, we're really grateful that they're willing to support us this year. Um, and we'll also be having five different challenges this year. We'll have um, an innovation challenge, a development challenge, a technical challenge, a master planning challenge, and a concept design challenge. So we really try to encompass the interdisciplinary work that goes into theme park design. Mm, wow, that's really cool. Um why would you like why would you say it was created i mean it was like just out of interest necessity like ambition like what motivated you motivated you guys to kind of do this competition or host it yes yeah, sam do you want to talk about the beginning <laughs> yeah yeah sure sure um yeah so so the first year uh, i can't speak about who or, or why it was made the first year mm -hmm. um it was it was a student named ronnie forrester who was the first president and it was originally the theme park entrepreneurship competition. Oh, interesting. And it had, I think that the challenge that year was to uh, redesign a new proposal for the old Geauga Lake site. Uh, mm -hmm. in um, and it was just, I think, a really ambitious uh, kind of just exercise just to see what would happen. Um, it was very exciting. I competed in that one. Um, mm -hmm. After after that first one, um, I became involved with uh, helping design and run the competition. And I think mm -hmm. uh, just because I've I've been kind of a common thread through quite a lot of it, uh, I've I've been able to see 
what it's become and why we've chosen to make a lot of the decisions. Um, it, it really exists uh, for, for two reasons. Um, one is it's a professional development tool for the club and the competitors. Um, it was always the idea to have professional sponsors and professional judges to mm-hmm. bring industry uh, experts to look at this work and to make the decision. We've always felt like it isn't the Cornell students making the decisions about what's good or not. We're just mm. to bring lots of people together uh, because we know how decentralized the industry can be at the university. Mm. Right, like we don't have a program even. We're just students from all these different majors uh, at Cornell who come together to, 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 to do this. Uh, and we know that it's similar across the country, too. Um, a lot of schools have, you know, 10, 20 students who are very passionate about this, but that's not enough people to really make a, make a break into the industry on your own. And so mm-hmm. we see competition as a way by bringing on board these different companies to, um, to, to, to kind of be the platform for that. So, so we wanted to do that. We wanted to do professional development. And we also wanted to sort of do um, portfolio development. Mm. Um, I come from a planning and design background, and I know how important portfolios can be for getting design jobs. Um, and it's difficult. It's difficult for theme park design specifically because uh, when you're in a program like at Cornell, you don't have projects that necessarily align themselves with the type of work you do in a theme park design firm, you know, whatever part of the industry you you land in, it looks really different. And that's not something that's taught in schools. Mm -hmm. So we to design the props to be challenging, um, to be interdisciplinary, but really to be very relevant to the field. So that hope is uh, if someone shows their portfolio to an employer in the industry, uh, Mm -hmm. in that portfolio, they have their winning submission for our competition it won't just be good design work or good technical work, but it'll be relevant work that the professionals know and respect because they know what goes into the competition and that students will know when they put into their portfolio, that's going to be something that's going to speak a lot for them. So those have been like two moving goals, um, you know, floating goals. And then each year uh, as, uh, as I've moved really just into like an advisor role, it's mm-hmm. been, on the, the president and the, the, the competitions board, the group of students who help run the competition each year um, to, to, to be more specific about what that's going to look like this year. Um, mm. And so the character of the competition changes each year, depending on kind of who has the, the, the spark to be like, this is what the, the challenge is going to be this year. Mm. That's really cool. That's really much respect. Um, <laughs> Shoot. Um, but so besides this competition, right? What else do you, do you guys do in your Cornell TP each TPEG? What do you guys do in the club outside of this competition? Sure. So our club is super interdisciplinary as well. Um, we have a lot of engineers in our club, so we work on some engineering projects. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past, we built an animatronic Phoenix and a wow. miniature Ferris wheel. Um, and we are currently working on a miniature drop tower. Um, mm-hmm. We also like to have networking events and attend different conferences in the industry um, and just more professional development um, and having uh, speakers come speak to us either in person or on video chats like this. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Hey, I, I have so much respect for what you guys are doing. Um, I It feels like when something isn't handed directly to you and you have to go and like do it yourself, you're more, um, what is it called? Just, uh, you're grateful for whatever opportunity comes your way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember like I'm a art student and I used to take classes at this place called Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. And back in the day, um, before they had something called entertainment design, um, people couldn't, take this entertainment design track. They had to go take the car design track and then the product design track and kind of, and the illustration and kind of Frankenstein their own program together. 
-hmm. And apparently people who came out of the program before it was just handed to them were really, really good. And um, of course, every, all the students who come out of the program, you know, they're really uh, well technical and creative, but um, you know, there's been some saying that, hey, like when the program, it exists right now, and all the classes are there for you, you all you have to do is take it. Some of the students seem less hungry and less ambitious because it's mm -hmm. easier. Um, but this is just a um, just anecdotal experience. I, I'm sure like if you have a professor, you know, telling you what to do and leading you, that would be great too. But I, I f from my experience, when students don't have it like handed to them and they're hungry for it, there's something like special about that. Um, it's like uh, they're more passionate for some reason because it's harder for them. It's something that we see a lot in our professional mentors, uh, the, the people who through the competition or through other parts of the club have, um, have really given a lot of their time and a lot of their energy really with no expectation of a return or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, they've, they've spoken to us about it because they, they often feel very similarly. It's, it's the whole industry in many ways is built off of people who, who found their own path and built their own path and were often very determined to carve out a space mm -hmm. for themselves. Um, and we've had, you know, it's hard to get into the industry in that not only are finding jobs hard, but also it's just hard to kind of get to talk to people. But we've, mm -hmm. you know, when we've managed to go to different, um, different conferences or get on the phone with different people, um, it's a really generous and kind industry. And I think it's because a lot yeah. of people come from these common backgrounds um, where they, you know, they've had to work for it too. And mm -hmm. be that they feel, yeah, they feel some kind of camaraderie with, uh, with us and our mission. And so we've, we've been really appreciative from uh, what the industry has been able to, to, to give to us as we've tried to build this. Hmm, cool. Um, yeah, man. Oh, oh um, logistics of the competition. Um, okay, uh, you guys, do you guys want to talk about that? I know you have a deadline coming up this Sunday, right? So today is March, uh, is March, I think it's Friday uh, 20th. And on, in two days, uh, some people watching this video is probably going to be too late for them, but I'm going to try to publish this video, you know, right after this talk. Uh, maybe you'll get some more submissions. Like how many submissions, how many teams do you guys have so far? Um, Sam, do you want to talk about um, Yeah, yeah. Or is that confidential stuff? No, it's not, it's not terribly confidential. We don't, um, we tend to like talking about the numbers once the uh, once the deadline is oh, up. Okay. But having said that, I mean it's it, it, it's a fair question because we're we're really happy in general with um with the range that we get. So so okay. last year we had about sixty teams sign up from from oh wow thing is from fifty five different universities. Wow. Which means it's like if we if you can get the word out, um, mm -hmm. being you can get these small groups of passionate people all over, you know, who, who want to be involved. Um, and we're seeing that so far this year too, mm -hmm. in terms of the actual number, we'll, we'll announce it soon. It's a bit of a moving. Yeah, topic. no, you got it. Wow. But like last year's numbers, wow, that, that's a lot more than I was thinking, you know, cause, um, wow, I mean, it's a lot of work. Well, they get money too. So there is a cash prize. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but when is a deadline for, um, so how, how long do they have to work on the project? Yeah, so all the specific dates um, are available on, on our website, but um, this year, let me just make sure, um, our, the end of our competition period will be about April 24th. Um, okay. That's the time to work with our judges and be able to release the winners by mid to late May. Oh, okay, cool, cool. That's a quick turnaround. That's great. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess that's all the questions I have regarding the, the design competition and stuff. Um, but Hey, I don't know if you guys are up for it, but you know, just to discuss like university kind of like stuff with the COVID-19 stuff going on right now, how's everyone doing at Cornell? Did you guys switch to online classes and stuff? Like what's, um, like your schooling situation like? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we switched to online classes. Um, we'll be starting in a couple of weeks with that um, mm -hmm. um, after our spring break. 
um, I think it's definitely really important that the university um, did that to just make sure that the community is really safe. Um, mm -hmm. But we're also keeping in mind that this is the situation at most universities right now. So yeah. when we're designing the prompt, we're making sure we're tailoring it to those sort of needs. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, it's definitely not easy these last couple of weeks and these coming months and stuff, but I hope, you know, as a community, you know, we can all come together and stay strong and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I guess that's all the time we have for today. Um, thank you guys so much. And in the links below, I will have your Facebook, your website, your Instagram. So students who want to learn more about the design competition can sign up. Um, is there any last words you guys like to add? Um, yeah, just thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really enjoyed speaking with you. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, Ariel, and thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Cool. I hope you get some more sign-ups, and uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Great. Stop recording.